What is up, everybody? We are at the Combine, as you can see from that sign behind me that's totally interrupted by this pole. This was the best <laughs> shot that I could get in the entire Indianapolis Convention Center. I'm here with Tony Venegas, and we are going to talk about what we saw day two of the Combine. So, Tony, what did you see that we can share to all of our fans at TexasHSFootball.com, and there's a, a man wandering around behind us. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> I think that was Pete Carroll, right? No, just, maybe. just from the, that white hair. So, yeah, what did you that, see, Tony? Well, at least uh, at least for me, uh, day two uh, got to uh, got to check out a lot of uh, different uh, players. The, the guys from day one that we were talking talk to, running backs, offensive line. Right. Uh, they were they actually had their on field workouts yesterday. Uh, the guy I was keeping an eye on was uh, UTEP running back Aaron Jones, just to see. Uh, just to see what he would do, uh, he really tried to improve his uh, his stock, and honestly, I think he did that. Uh, yeah. He ended up running uh, an, an unofficial uh, four five forty on his uh, on a second time, which is right around where he wanted to be. But uh, but I think he really improved his uh, really improved his stock. Uh, but man, it, I think it's gonna be tough for Aaron just because it's a really, really, really deep running back class this year. Right, you were such a El Paso homer; it's ridiculous. <laughs> but I, I think I just saw Kyle Shanahan walk past us while you were. Uh, I, I think they, 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 think they well. might yeah. be in the, all the stadium right now. So you're covering all the UTEP players. Uh, can you kind of talk about uh, the, the high school story that you're writing about with Tyler John Tyler? Oh as yes, well? yeah, yeah. Go ahead and give them a preview. All right, absolutely. Yeah, uh, actually. Uh, just got finished up uh, talking in the last few minutes with uh, uh, Rickland Holmes, the, the head coach of Tyler John Tyler, and he was actually the head coach of three players from the combine: uh, Greg Ward, uh, Tyus Bowser, and Fred Ross from a, a state semifinalist team from uh, from 2012. So just talked nice. a little bit about each of them, and uh, that story will be coming up uh, later this uh, later this afternoon. Caught talking about the. Tyler John Tyler connection there at the at the combine should be really good. I could tell they're all very excited to represent Tyler in East Texas uh, here in Indianapolis. So that that'll be coming up later on uh, this afternoon here on uh, Texas HS football. Right, and we're talking to all the Texas high school players. We're trying to bring it back to the high school gridiron. I was talking to Patrick Mahomes, and he was speaking about White House and his experience with Texas Tech and how Cliff Kingsbury, TexasHSFootball.com's most handsome man of the year, <laughs> was a positive impact on his career and gave him a lot of good advice to prepare him for this level because Kingsbury went through the same thing. Mm. Uh, he wanted him to enjoy the moment. Uh, his dad, Pat Mahomes, who was a professional baseball player, was kind of preparing him for the professionalism of the sport. And we're expecting Patrick Mahomes to go probably around the first round. Yeah, I would think so. First round, yeah. Early second round. Then I also talked to Dee Westbrook as well, and he was very enthusiastic about the Cameron Yo. Uh, he even gave him a shout out. What was it? Yo Pride yeah, Never Yo Died. Yo Pride Never Died. He had a little uh, smile on his face, gave me a nod because I had this big grin because we're always stoked when they talk about Texas high school football. Ball because some of them they're a little you know hesitant about it because they're wondering why is this guy talking about my high school days but I guess some people had better experiences than others but Dede Westbrook very receptive about Cameron Yo mm -hmm. great career with Oklahoma very stoked for the next level but he was exhausted because just like us he didn't really sleep well with the whole flight leaving at like four or five in the morning. Yeah. Just the, like we did, because I know <laughs> I got up at like three thirty, you got up at around the same time and yep. had to bus in here from Chicago. So he was very honest with being exhausted, uh, probably some honesty and transparency that will pass along to the team interviews because every single one of these players have to get interviewed by the teams. We know DD had some previous domestic violence issues around 2012, 2013 that he's trying to put behind him. What he's not trying to put behind him, terrible transition, but whatever, is his career with Cameron Yo. Like I said, very receptive about it. And then we tried to get an interview with Zane Gonzalez. That yeah, didn't really yeah, work didn't out didn't too happen. well. Uh, but uh, but just uh, if I can uh, hop in real quick, the uh, the whole uh, you know talking about you know guys being you know proud of their their hometowns. Uh, a couple of guys I did get a chance to talk to yesterday. Uh, former uh, Texas A&M wide receiver Ricky Seals Jones uh, got to talk to him uh, coming from uh, from Sealy, uh, talking to him and also uh, Baylor wide receiver Katie Cannon coming right. from uh, from Mount Pleasant. Uh, both guys. Uh, talked about just how excited they were, especially considering the size of the small towns that they're both 
that they're both coming from. Because adding up the population from both Sealy and Mount Pleasant, we're talking about 22,000 people combined, which is very, very, very small. And and, and I know just seeing, especially the guys from the smaller towns, uh, coming coming out to a, a big event like this, and especially when the spotlight is so big on them, then it, it really is kind of an interesting perspective to see how how how, how these guys just all react to that. It's right. definitely uh, definitely something uh, everybody kind of reacts in a different way. But I, the one thing I have noticed consistently is that uh, you bring up their high school, a lot of the guys definitely pretty pretty open to talking about it right. at least uh, you know and you could tell very proud of, of where they're coming from and my dd westbrook interview ended early so i snuck off to the deshaun watson interview and i guess someone thought i was a celebrity or whatever <laughs> because the crowd just parted and i was able to go right into the front row uh listen to what deshaun watson of course the national champion mm -hmm. had to say about his career and he also highlighted his high school career and the importance of high school obviously he didn't play in texas but it's still an important part of the development process and he gave a shout out to dak prescott and said that he was an important influence and stack is actually a huge inspiration for a lot of these young football players that are coming up that might get drafted in the later rounds but as dak proved and of course tom brady the super bowl champion that you don't have to be a first round pick to make an impact right. so we've got day three coming up uh miles garrett who else uh, solomon thomas agenda? that's right solomon thomas will be uh, talking to uh, talking to tyus uh, bowser, Tyus bowser right. uh, the the third of the uh, Tyler John Tyler connection, I'll be talking with him uh, later this afternoon, and that full story will be coming up, uh, like I said, later today on uh, Texas Asians Football. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to go to the fan zone as well. Probably try to take some uh, some catches and <laughs> run some drills. I actually ran into a couple of celebrity football players. I saw Slash. I saw what else did I see? Tiki Barber. And most of them, I could take them. They're all, they're not as big as you, you think. Th you think you could yeah, take them? Yeah, they're all walls. I'll just, I'll go for the knees. All right, <laughs> TexasHighSchoolFootball.com, Kyle Spishock. Tony Venegas. And we are going to go exploring for day three, and we will post a video probably this afternoon about our experiences today. So stay tuned for that. Everything is on TexasHighSchoolFootball.com. Check out our Facebook. We've got some live video there as well from day two. Day three, day three, whatever, yeah. whatever day we're in. It's Indianapolis. It's always cold, and you know, whatever. I'm losing <laughs> yeah, you, my mind. You, you, yeah, I got frostbite. I will, yeah, I, I will admit it has been, uh, it has been cold for for you. You know, yeah. being up here, being from uh, Southern California, right, and San Antonio. Yeah, it's, it's San brain Antonio. frostbite. It's a little and I'm, different. I'm, I'm I'm dying here, and I miss the heat. I miss <laughs> the West and the South, and wherever I'm from. Yeah, I, 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 came, I, I came prepared because I had the I had the big coat and gloves here because I went to. I went to school up here in yeah, this show, part of the Yeah, show me your hands real quick. Like, look how beautiful his hands are. They're, like, soft and warm, and then mine are just these gnarled messes because of, uh, you know, frostbite and frigid, and the arthritis is kicking in, and oh, it's terrible. Stop. Uh, yeah. You're... You're, you're not that much older than I, I need am. gloves. No, no, Brian, no we need, we need Texas players. High School football gloves, okay? Come on, man. You, you sent us here unprepared. All right, we're out. We'll see you later. Right, Take care, guys. guys.